Why, hello there. Would you want to go full-time Web3? Well, now's your chance. Morales is hiring a technical YouTube content creator. If you have programming skills, feel comfortable explaining Web3 concepts in front of a camera, and want to work fully remote, there's a link in the description, so go ahead and apply. Now, back to the regular programming. What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to another Morales tutorial video. In this video, we're going to check out the Get Wallet native transactions endpoint provided by Morales. So it allows you to get the native transactions, whether you're on the Ethereum network, so Ethereum being transferred, or on the Polygon network, any Matic transactions. These are the transactions this endpoint checks out and orders them by block number in descending order. So the most recent transaction is provided as the first response and then descending from there. So if we check out this cool little app I've made, what you can do is provide your wallet address over here take it from metamask copy this address from over here i've done a lot of transactions on the mumbai testnet you can of course provide any evm chain over here and as we get the transactions you get all the transactions over here on the 8th of november in 2022 we sent 2.5 matic on the 8th we also sent 5 matic we received 5 matic on the 8th as well and then if we go back we can see all these transactions that have occurred for this wallet on the Mumbai testnet. And we also get the transaction hash as a response for each of these transactions. So we can actually use that to go to the Polygon Mumbai Explorer to check out the transaction in more detail if we like. If this is something that you're interested in and you want to learn how to use the Get Wallet Native Transactions endpoint, stay stuck in and I'll show you how to do this. Hey, I'm Jay, your Morales instructor from beautiful Finland. I got into crypto in 2020, and I've been building in the space ever since. In my free time, I enjoy running and at the gym, and in the summer, you'll definitely find me at the golf course. Now, let's get stuck in and learn about Web3. Radio, getting started here in our documentation, we're on docs.morales.io. We've selected the API reference tab, and in the sidebar over here, we're looking into the transaction API, which has two endpoints, get transactions by wallet and get transactions by hash. So if you know the hash number of the transaction, you can also get the transaction details, but we're just looking at all the native transactions for any specified wallet for a specified chain. At like it says over here, get native transactions ordered by block number in descending order. So the latest transaction action so if, for example on ethereum network of ethereum being transferred will be the first object in the response and so on and so forth on the polygon network any matic transactions will be included in the response now looking at the parameters this endpoint takes it takes an address which is required so the wallet you want to check out then the chain is by default set to ethereum but you can choose between any of these evm chains to get your desired network now if you're on a local dev chain this is where you have to put your subdomain but that is kind of a niche use case what is more useful is these from block and to block parameters or from date and to date parameters. So if you know the range of block numbers, you're interested in transactions, you can input them here. Or if you don't know the block numbers and instead know the dates, you could input them for the from date and to date parameter. Now, finally, you also have a cursor parameter. So every response is limited to 100 transactions. So if a wallet has more than 100 transactions for your next request, you have to provide the cursor that your first response gave back so you get the next transactions and the limit allows you to limit the amount of transactions you get per response by default it is 100 which is the maximum so we can go ahead and test this out let's scroll all the way up provide our metamask address which i've been using in multiple morales tutorials transferring matic between my accounts so let's copy that we'll paste that in here We'll select the Polygon Mumbai testnet because that's where we're on right now. And we can go ahead and just try it out. We'll play with the ranges here after our first request. So let's try it. And here we see we have 133 native transactions on this account. The page had this is 100 because we didn't set the limit parameter. So we got the 100 latest transactions and we get this long string for the cursor. So if we want to get the most historical 33 transactions, we have to provide this cursor to get them in the next response and then in the results array we have all the objects including every single transaction so in the transaction details you have the hash the from address the to address so here our account to which we currently qu queried has received a value of five matic so it has the decimals as well so this has 18 zeros you also have the gas price etc etc block timestamp block hash and so on and so forth and you'll have a hundred of these objects as the limit is 100. Now first, let's try ahead and copy out this cursor. Copy that. Let's go all the way to the left. And let's check the timestamp of the very last object we have over here. So the very last timestamp is the 29th of March 2022. So now when we provide this cursor as a parameter over here, 
and try this out. Now, the first object in our response is from 29th of March 2022. And this only includes 33 objects. How, how cool is that? That is how you can loop through all your transactions if you have more than 100 transactions. Now, let's say we remove the cursor and provide some dates. So now we don't have a cursor, but let's provide a from date and a to date. So for example, 2022, let's look from July 1st until today's date, which is November 10th. So 2022, 11 and 10. And now if we go ahead and run this, now we should get a response of only 59 transactions as the latest one is our latest transaction, which we did on the 8th of November. But if we go all the way back, this happened on the 12th of July. So between the 1st of July and the 12th of July, I didn't make any transactions. And this way you can limit your response to only the date ranges you're interested in. So that's a quick little overview of how the endpoint works. You can always check out all the different languages Morales supports. There's good instructions for your backend of choosing. We'll be doing a quick demonstration with Node.js and a React app over here. So all you have to do is install the Morales SDK, and then you're ready to use the EVM API from the SDK and the transaction method with the get wallet transaction endpoint. So now let's jump back into Visual Studio Code and check out how this would work in practice in your app. All right, so I've opened up Visual Studio Code and I have this repo called Get Transactions. We have a back end, which has our Node.js Express app, and when we have a front end, which has our React app. Let's first take a look at the back end where we set up our API call. So it's in the index.js file, a very simple Express app only including one endpoint at the transactions path TXS. So whoever's making a request to this endpoint, we're checking out what their query parameters are, and then we're firing up the Morales EVM ABI attractions, get wallet transactions endpoint, and we're getting from the query the address that was sent and the chain. So in our React front end, we have to send the wallet address we're interested in and the chain. You could also add here the blocks, the dates, the cursor and the limit if you'd like to. We've just kept this simple and we're looking at a specific wallet on a specific chain. Then what we do after we get that result from our Morales API, we get the raw format of this balance variable we've called it and then we return it back to our front end over here. And just to make sure when you initialize your Express app, we make sure that we start Morales with your API key. You can get your Morales API key from your admin dashboard on the Web3 API tab. And only after that is initialized, so Morales is started, we fire up our Express app, app listen to port 3000 over here. And it's important we know it's port 3000 because we need to know which port here when we run this locally, we're sending the request to on our React front end. So now we can close up our index.js over here and take a look at our front end where we have a React app here in the source folder. We have our app.js where we built the whole app. So what we have here is we have a state variable. So in the client, we can keep track of what the address is set to on the client side and what the chain is set to. So initially we have it set to Ethereum 0x1 over here. But later on, you'll see in the select input, we can also select the Mumbai testnet. Then we have a function called fetch transactions, which we trigger on a press of a button. And then we send a Axios get request to our backend that is running on localhost 3000. And we're sending it to the transaction endpoint, sending the query parameters, the address that is set here in our client side and the chain that's set on the client side. And this way, the response we get will be the transactions for that specific address on that specified chain. And then we set our transaction state variable to the responses data dot result. So whatever the response from our Morales API, that will be set as our transactions variable here in our React front end. Then taking a closer look at what we're rendering on the page, we only have two inputs here. We have the wallet input, which is simple. We just change the address when a user of the app changes the address. Then we have a chain selection, which is a select input where we have two options. You could set all the chains you'd like to over here, but we have Ethereum and the Mumbai testnet over here as options in our front end. And then we're just rendering those results. So as long as we've actually made the call to our backend and have a transactions variable here in our React app, we'll go, go ahead and map through the results array and present this data over here. So let's go ahead and fire this app first. So then it'll be easier to explain what we're returning over in our front end. So I've started my back end on port 3000 and our, our React front end on port 3001. The app should look like this. These repos will be in the description if you want to check them out yourself. So now let's go ahead and try our own wallet again over here. Copy the address here from MetaMask 
and change to the Polygon Mumbai testnet and get the transactions. And look at this, now we're rendering all these transactions onto our front end. So we have the date in sending order and we have whether we received or sent Matic in these transactions. Some of them have zero Matic, but we'll look into them shortly because they're just transactions where we've had to pay Matic for gas, for example, for an NFT transfer. So if we open up the console, as we press the get transactions button, it also console logged us the object. We got a response. And when we look into the data and the result, you see here we get the cursor, the page size, and the results array. And here in the results array, we have all these details. So we have the block timestamp, the gas price, the from address, to address, and at the bottom, we have the value that was sent. So all we're actually doing here is we're getting the first 10 characters of the block timestamp, presenting them over here. Then we're checking whether the from address is the same as the wallet address here in our client. If it is, then we render a send. If it's not, then we render a receive. And then we're just dividing the value by the decimals to get the amount of Matic that was transferred. And as you see, it's a link. So because we have the transaction hash, we can always direct to this transaction on the Polygon Mumbai Explorer. So if we click it, it opens up on Mumbai Polygon Scran transaction and we append it with the transaction hash. And this shows us our transaction from 05XDAD to 04XD and it's the five Matic. And we also have the logs over here, what else happened in that transaction. So that is how simple and easy this is of course, you could query for any other chain because we've set the back end so that it sees what chain is sent from this React front end and you could change the wallet to whatever wallet. We could try a different wallet over here. Let's go account one, for example, and change that over here and get the transactions for this wallet. And you see we have slightly different transactions. Mostly my transactions are between account one and account two. So you'll see the same five Matic being received and transferred between the two ad addresses. And like I said, over here where we have zero Matic, if we open this on the Polygon Explorer, we see this transaction was actually a token transfer of a non-fungible ERC721 token. And the native transaction was just the transaction fee that was sent over here was, was very low in Matic. So that is why it's being presented as zero Matic transaction over here. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on getting the native transactions for any wallet on any EVM chain. I hope you could put this to good use and I'll see you in the next one.